this chapter, we're going to play with the CSS3 generator, which is going to show you how to do some of these really cool, fun things. We're also going to play with a couple of other tools. We're going to play with a, basically it's a Greek text editor for making fake text. And we'll show you some other cool things that we can do. So I've set up a page that has a container, header, article, and a side, and they're appropriately labeled. And I've started my CSS, where I've set a background color. I've also brought in um, a fun font, and I'll show you that when you hit the live preview in Dreamweaver, you can see the font effects. And we're going to be going back and forth between live and the um, normal view as I'm applying things. Now you can hand code any of these, and I'm going to show you I'm using with the book. I'm using the book here for this. We can do simple things. One of the ones I like is setting it up a two-color gradient, and we're going to just show you applying these. So to our article, we're going to apply a two-color gradient. And by the way, I'm using the Kindle Cloud Reader here for the book. Um, I love the Kindle Cloud Reader. It makes it easy for me to take everything with me wherever I go. So I can put in a... Now this will be pretty much ignored because of it, this will be accepted by an old browser um, if it doesn't accept the new thing. But we're going to do a background. And you can pick whatever color you want to start with. We've actually already got that in place with the FF9, so we're going to do the background with a linear gradient. You'll notice that Dreamweaver is not giving me any hints on this one because it doesn't know it. And then we're going to go ahead and drop in two colors here. So we'll pick a starting color and an ending color. And we will come over here and go into Live View. And we'll see if that works. And sometimes it's not going to work. And this is one of the problems is you actually have to usually test this in a browser. So if something doesn't work, don't assume it doesn't work. Okay, that really didn't work. Now this is one of the problems that we have is sometimes when you're putting things in, they are not recognized by the specific browser we're using. So let's try it in Chrome. still not accepting it. So I will go back and double check to see if I did it wrong. We'll actually take a quick look here. Background, linear gradient, top, comma, and two colors. And that should, should work. But it frequently doesn't. And that's why you have to use specific items from that will um, go to specific browsers because they're not all applying things evenly. So when you're getting to things complex like this that aren't widely supported, you can go into the CSS3 generator, which is at css3generator.com. And so you can pick any of these. And here we're going to do a gradient. Go here and we can find any gradient that we like. I'm going to find something simple. And then I can also change the colors here if I want it to do something different. And we'll have it change a little bit more here. So now I have a nice gradient and you'll see that the code actually gets really complex. Um, but I can simply copy it, drop it over here into my article, and there you go. So you see it actually makes this have a different gradient where it's actually putting these in for each different browser. And what I want you to do for this lab is you're going to create 
a similar page where you have different sections and I want you to try out at least five of the different things from the Ultimate CSS Generator. I'm going to show you a couple of others that I like. So I'm going to do a box shadow and we're going to keep this simple. And just pick a color I like. Shows you what it does. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to drop it on my header. And you can see as long as it's in live, it'll apply right away. And then I'm going to show you a couple more of these. Um, I think the text shadow is fun. I want to keep this pretty short and sweet. And we're going to apply that just to our H1 text. And you can see I've got a nice little glow there. And we've got more fun here. I like the border radius. And we can do this for, we could do top, left, and it shows you how that's going to work. And I can copy it here. And we'll put this on my header. You'll notice it gives me rounded. And if I only want it to be top left and bottom right, I can do that and put zero on the others if I want that to stay that way. So again, I'm going to replace this here. And so you'll see that it's not on every corner. And this really simplifies when you're doing stuff that isn't fully supported and standardized yet. You can take advantage of it and make it work. So I want you to play with these. I think those are the only ones I'm going to play with right now. I want you to use at least four, at least four of these. Oh, I did want to show you the multiple columns one. I'm going to drop in multiple columns. And I'm going to put in two columns and a five pixel gap. And then I'm going to copy this. But you're going to notice that it's not going to make any sense until we see some text in it. So I'm going to go put it into the article. And we have the two columns here, but you can't see it. So I'm going to go out to, and you can just look for the generator. And you tell it how many paragraphs. I'm going to say two. And generate two paragraphs of text. And I'm going to copy that and paste it over here. I gotta take it out of live view for that to work. And then I can go back to live view, and you can see I am now having two columns of text. So I want you to play with the generator. It really simplifies some of the more advanced formatting. You don't need to put real content into this, but I would like you to play with at least four or five things on that, and do at least what I've done where you have a container, header, article, aside, 